All right. But yeah, thank you guys for coming. REO team, thanks for hosting this event as well. It's been one of the best events every year. And so it's incredible to be back here at this venue. Today, I'd like to talk about what we're calling the super app thesis. More information to come. In general, we took a lot of inspiration building on our weave, looking at, at things outside of Web3, more specifically like Web2. Uh, in Web2, what's really working and why is it working? And how can we enable users from Web2 to come into Web3 in a way that is low in friction? And the conclusion that we came to is that there need to be three components that must exist in order for applications to exist. We're calling them super apps capable of onboarding more than a million people at one time. Those three components are onboarding. For developers, a way to build in this ecosystem. For users, a way to have an account or some type of way to just get onto it. Data, so like the database component, a way for people to store data and pull data, interact with it. And then capital, financial rails. I think that for developers, there needs to be a place to interact with the value that's being created. And there also needs a, to be a place to store that value. I guess if you compare this to like Web2, uh, a good example would be Twitter or x.com. For their onboarding rails, they have email, which is at the end of the day, it's a protocol. Uh, for data storage, they're using Google Cloud. And then for payment rails, they're actually using Stripe. You can also look at other applications like Facebook, Instagram, outside of social media as well. Uh, you, you need this combination of things to be uh, a frictionless onboarding experience for the average person. So if we visualize this in terms of consumer and developer, it's interesting because you have two funnels that people have to go through in order to have a chance at building what we're calling a super app. So users have to be able to pass through each of these three stages. They have to be able to onboard, they have to be able to store data, they have to be able to, I guess, move value into this ecosystem. And developers have to do the same, but in a little bit of a different way. They have to be able to onboard. They need the tooling to build onboarding experiences for their users. They have to have very easy and low cost ways of storing data. And they also have to have stores of value that they can tap into and leverage for the users that are coming in and methods to monetize these applications as well. Taking a look at where the Arweave ecosystem existed as of midway through last year, the categories here are very heavy on developer tooling and infrastructure. I think it's interesting because a lot of the ecosystem has already been moving in this direction in terms of how do we make Arweave more easy for people to understand and how do we expand the number of use cases that are low hanging for people to build on top of with. But now with AO, I'd imagine that this is going to change a little bit over the next few months. So let's talk about the stuff that we've been working on at Community Labs in a goal of solving for the different components of these two funnels. So in terms of data, we've built Protocol Land, which is intended to be a source control collaboration system for developers to go upload their code. It lives on our weave. And instead of using GitHub, you have a way to push. And eventually, the, the vision for this is creating tooling and, and, and a framework that is optimal for truly decentralized application development. You should be able to upload a package or a repository, a piece of code, and disappear from the face of the planet. And other people should be able to carry that on in a way that is incentivized. That's where we'd like to go with Protocol Land. But for the purpose of this talk, Protocol Land serves a, as a place for people to upload data, for developers specifically. Our Weave Kit is very similar. Our Weave Kit is a one-stop library for people to tap into all of the different pieces of tooling that exist on our Weave. So if you're interested in writing a smart contract with Warp, if you're interested in using a bundler or a bundler system to upload data more easily, our Weave Kit is an abstraction of all of those core pieces of tooling to make it easier for developers to store data. And at the end of the day, users are also inherently using our Weave Kit under the hood. They just don't know it, which is good. In terms of onboarding, we built two tools for this as well. In Web3, we, we wanted there to not be much of a trade-off between good user experience and good security. So we built Rconnect as a way, non-custodial wallet. It's like the MetaMask for Arweave, the primary way that people can interact with Arweave applications and store value. For people that care more about a really smooth user experience with a great amount of security as well, but it is custodial, we built Authent. 
OAuthn is, I guess you could compare it to a, a privy in, in the rest of Web3. It's the way that our Weave applications can go about enabling their users to onboard through Google logins or OAuth flows rather than needing to download a Chrome extension, for example. So Bark actually launched a couple days ago. We're very excited about TestNet. Bark is an AMM that is the first AMM built on AO. And the goal there is enabling people to trade value very simply and easily inside of that new environment. We're also building an SDK so that developers can very easily tap into this system without needing to go through our UI. Um, it's interesting because I think that the majority of trading volume for Uniswap actually comes through alternative UIs rather than uniswap.org itself. So we want to do the same thing with Bark. And then Astro as a way for people to store value. Uh, for people coming into the Rweave ecosystem, for people monetizing applications, there needs to be a stable coin. Um, ideally, there'd be a few, and I think there will be within the next couple months, which is great. Uh, but we wanted to build one native to Rweave, and so that's called Astro. So if we visualize this in the context of Community Labs as a venture studio building on Rweave, we're really excited because I think that Bark and Astro are, are, are the final pieces to cover every piece of these two funnels that we've been working on for the past two years. The goal at the end of the day is building an environment for projects to get started inside of the Rweave ecosystem, but more importantly, for people to be building these super apps, which kind of combine all of this tooling that we've been working on as a way to build applications on Rweave that leverage all of the advantages of Web3 and crypto but without the end user having to understand all of the intricacies of all of this stuff. We're also building a marketing team to help solve for the, the go-to-market of the consumer-facing products and BD team to solve for the onboarding of developers and other companies coming into the ecosystem. If you're interested in reading more about some of the consumer apps that we're thinking about building on our Weave, you can read this blog post that's on communitylabs.com. One of the products we're actually kicking off now, it's called Oasis, and it's a fractionalized, tokenized real estate product that will bring real world assets into AO as well, which we're very excited for. And we're also today announcing AO Ventures, which is a new incubator program that we're kicking off as a way to bring more projects into the ecosystem and help more projects get off the ground that aren't necessarily going through the Community Lab Fellowship itself. It'll include 300K in investment from community labs towards projects that are participating. It will involve workshops supporting founders that are trying to learn how to become founders in this ecosystem. And it will include marketing, development, and design resources as well. So all of the teams that we've been building in community labs to service our own products, we're really excited to be able to help out with these other projects that'll be getting started inside of the incubator. If you guys remember, Open Web Foundry from a couple years ago. This is heavily inspired by Open Web Foundry. I think that for us, my start in Rweave was really through Open Web Fellowship, which got renamed to Open Web Foundry. And what we want to do is something similar, enabling a similar number of projects to come into the ecosystem and get off the ground in a way that's more scalable than Community Labs itself right now. So yeah, that's everything that I have. Thank you guys for having me. Appreciate it.